If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. Declaring war on the New World Order. TruthRadioShow.com And welcome everybody to the Dan Badani Show right here at TruthRadioShow.com. So we are on to Matthew chapter 19. So we're doing a biblical comprehensive study of the book of Matthew. And again, we're on to number 19. So here we go. Um, amazing, amazing so far. The, the scriptures are just uh, so full of context. And if you're looking for somebody to just read the Bible for you, you got the wrong place, guys. We are here to actually study the Bible. So we would take normally two minutes to read a chapter of the Bible. We don't do that here. We take as long as we can to read it because it has to be done that way. It needs to be read in its context, plain and simple. So what we do here is we read the Bible in its context. So we have a specific Bible study approach. We pray for wisdom and understanding, and that only comes from the Holy Spirit through the our Heavenly Father. And we read the Scripture in its context because context is key, and let the Scripture interpret Scripture. Plain and simple. We don't go by religious dogma. We don't read the Bible through a religious lens. We read it through the Holy Spirit, plain and simple. So Jesus, Yeshua, Messiah, we come to you and we ask you for your forgiveness for our sins and transgressions. And we come before you, Heavenly Father, to ask that the divine teacher, the Holy Spirit, to come upon us, Lord, and to help us understand and learn the wisdom from your wonderful word. In your name, amen. So here we are, guys. So book of Matthew chapter 19, and it's going to be an awesome one. So what we did was like um, last time we were here, we were on chapter 18. We learned about forgiveness. We learned also how serious Jesus was when it came to children. Anybody that would mislead them or offend them or hurt them in any which way. It's a, you know one of the most severest things that Jesus really takes serious, you know what I mean, uh, when it comes to children. And also we learned about forgiveness as well. If you don't forgive others, yeah, plain and simple, Jesus is not going to forgive you before the Father, bottom line. So if you can't forgive others, he's not going to forgive you, plain and simple. So it's something we need to learn about. So now we're on to chapter 19. And it came to pass when Jesus had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee and he came into the coast of Judea beyond Jordan. And great multitudes followed him and healed them all. He healed them all there. So sorry, guys, a little tongue-tied today. So because we're on the shows we do, our spiritual welfare shows and new shows and everything else. So uh, forgive me here. So great multitudes, which... <laughs> Untold thousands of people, literally, followed him, and he healed them, plain and simple. So, could you only imagine how long it would take him to do that? Yeah, it's a day's work right there, you know what I mean? So, the Pharisees also came unto him, tempted him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? So, what does that mean, put away his wife? Divorce, that's what it means. Is it lawful for man to divorce his wife? That's what the Pharisees are asking him. Here's the thing. They keep asking him these questions to try to goad him to say something that goes against the Jewish tradition so they could have an excuse to get rid of Jesus. You know what I mean? And uh, they really wanted to kill him. Yeah, because they could not stand that this man, you know, well, not man, the son of man, the son of God, the Messiah was here. And they did not want to accept that. So they tried everything in power to try to take out Jesus. So they're asking him once again, is it lawful for a man to put his way his wife for every cause? In other words, just because you want, you want to you know, divorce your wife, is it lawful to do that? So Jesus answers to them. And guys, by the way, if you don't have a Bible, uh, uh, you watch on the video here. It depends uh, because this network uh, gets shared on multiple networks. Uh, some of them are audio only and some uh, video as you see here in the video too. Uh, but if it, you listen to the audio version, I encourage you to open up your own Bible. So uh, anyway, and Jesus answered them and said, Have you not read that which was made them at the beginning made them male and female? So here's Jesus once again reciting the Old Testament. And back then it wasn't known as the Old Testament, it was known as Scripture. And me, I don't really go by Old New Testament, I just call it Scripture. From Genesis to Revelation, 
period. You know what I mean? And this, you know, a lot of modern day churches, unfortunately, say, oh, we don't want, really have to pay attention to the Old Testament, blah, blah, blah. When, why would Jesus constantly recite the Old Testament when he says, as it is written? And have you not read? You're talking about the Old Testament. So the Old Testament is very important, which again, I consider the whole Bible the Bible, plain and simple. The Torah and the Bible were all into one, plain and simple. So again, um, Jesus was um, tempted and asked, um, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any reason? And he answered them and said, have you not read that which had been made by them in the beginning, made them male and female? And he said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they shall twine, uh, shall, I'm sorry, they shall, they twine, I'm sorry, shall be one flesh. So, Basically, you know, when this is talk about the book of Genesis, right? Man shall leave his parents and shall cleave to his wife, right? And they become one flesh. So he's, uh, you know, again, they ask him, is it lawful for man to do us, his wife, for any cause, right? And he goes on, as far as it's written, have you not read it uh, since the beginning? A man shall leave his parents and cleave to his wife and they shall become one flesh. And that's, yes, uh, when you get married, sexual relations and all that, you literally become one flesh. And if you want to get to the genetics of this, this is amazing stuff. And it's no perversion here, guys, because sex and marriage is a beautiful thing to God. And so we don't hold no punches here, guys. So anyway, what does that mean? And I want to get everything I can out of this context. It's just amazing. All the information we can disseminate through the Holy Spirit, you know, it's amazing. So they twain shall be one flesh. So... Here's the thing, when a male has sex with a woman, right, his DNA is injected into her, especially with having children. You could be, you two become one flesh, literally. So men out there, your wives, okay, your wife share your genetic code now. Your DNA is now part of her. That's why the Bible is very adamant about having sex with only one partner, your wife, because, yeah, just say a man who went on a sleep room, just say 10 girls, right? And he ejaculated inside the girls. And again, I apologize for the language, but well, I mean, this is what the Bible talks about too. So I'm not going to apologize really because this this is adult stuff here. And you know what? The Bible talks about this stuff. So every time you ejaculate inside of a girl, your, your DNA becomes part of her. Now I'm just talking real, guys, and it's nothing perverted about this. You know what I mean? This is why God is very abdomen about one man and one woman Plain and simple, you know what I mean? Because it's genetic destruction, you know what I mean? Plain and simple. We talk about this a lot. So, and I can't say too much because YouTube, whatever, but yeah, when a man and woman have sex, they become one flesh, literally. It's not figuratively, it's literally. So, wherefore, they are no more twain but one flesh. So, he goes on to explain it more. And what therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. So, once again, not to sound redundant. The Pharisees asked him, hey, can a man divorce his wife because he wants to, literally, you know, if any cause? And he said, have you not read it before? Since the beginning, God made male and female. And for this cause, a man shall leave his parents and shall cleave to his wife, and they shall become one flesh, and therefore are no more twain but one flesh. And, you know, genetically speaking, as I just talked about, you know, and spiritually as well. You know what I mean, when you marry a woman, you two become one. But where therefore God has joined together, let no man put us under, right? And they said unto him, Why did Moses then come in to give a writing of divorce and put her away? So now they're saying, yeah, catch us very clearly, right? They're trying to goad him and they're trying to trick him into a question, right? Into an answer, right? Notice how they say for any cause. Moses never said for every cause. Put that in, you know, in your notes here. The Pharisees are saying, well, is it all right to a man to divorce his wife for any cause? Moses never gave, Moses never said you could do it for any cause. Very limited specific causes you're allowed to divorce, right? For Moses himself. He never said for any cause. So that's him, them, trying to manipulate the question to try to go Jesus to the wrong answer so they have an excuse to go against him. So they said unto him, why did Moses command a 
to give a rain of divorcement to put her away. So he said unto them, Moses, because the hardness of your heart suffered, you put away your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. So I say unto you, now again, they're asking for any reason, any cause. Moses never said, again, I have to emphasize this, Moses never told them you could divorce somebody for any cause. There's the cases of adultery and stuff like that. And Jesus goes on to emphasize this, right? And he said, I say unto you, that whoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, that's, you know, having sex with somebody else, and shall marry another, committed adultery. And whoever marries her, which is put away, does commit adultery. So he's answering exactly how Moses laid it down too. So he's telling you, like, if somebody's out there and you got divorced, right? You got divorced and, you know, for whatever reason, and, you know, if it wasn't, you know, because your spouse committed adultery, you can't marry again. And it'll be committing adultery. And that person will be committing adultery. But, again, there's, uh, you know, if you were in the flesh, we call it, you know what I mean? If you wasn't born again, then I, I'm sure the other things could be forgiven. If you were just walking in the flesh and all that, you didn't know any better. There's little things like that, you know what I mean? Well, grace and all that, so we can go through, but in little specifics. But if you're in the faith here and, you know, you, you decide to cheat on your husband or wife, that's adultery, bottom line. But anyway, whoever marries her that is put away, so if you marry a divorced woman, you're committing adultery too. But again, because of fornication. And she's divorced because, you say, the husband committed fornication, she divorced him, you know, committed adultery, then that's a different story, you know. So, and it says, his disciples say unto him, if the case of the man be so with his wife, it is good not to marry. But he said unto them, all men cannot receive the same, save thee that whom it is given. For there are some eunuchs which were born from their mother's womb, and there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. And there are be eunuchs which have been made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake, but it is uh, able to receive it, let him receive it. So I don't know exactly what a eunuch is. So again, I, I learned, as I talked about through the series, uh, what, you know what I mean, like I'm learning myself as I go along as well. A lot of times I do pre-read pre this, but... Um, what I do is like I learn, so sometimes I forget the meaning of words. So let's find out what a eunuch is, first of all. Eunuchs in the Bible. So eunuchs are a Bible typically defined as castrated men placed in charge over kings or harem's wife, concubines. All right, so eunuchs are castrated men. So men who can't have children. Or sex in general, I think. Uh, but yeah. So we've got a better understanding of the word eunuch. So, and for there are some eunuchs, and some were born from their mother's womb, and there are other some eunuchs that were made eunuchs of men. But there are eunuchs which have been uh, made themselves eunuchs from the kingdom of heaven's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. So let's talk about men. You know, it's better not to marry at all. You say celibate and all that. Okay, it just avoids a lot of problems too, but, and you know, the thing is too, you know, men, you know, that's why God created Eve for Adam too, you know what I mean, to be, have a, um, a spouse, a companion, you know. So anyway, verse 13, it says, then were brought, they were brought, I'm sorry, unto him little children that put his uh, hands on them and pray, and the disciples rebuked them. So here we are with the children again, this is, in this is how important it is, okay? And we got more coming on uh, the divorce and everything uh, because Jesus talks more about a, a biblical marriage in the book of Matthew. So before we get to the children, he's talking about, you know, uh, plain and simple. And he, the only exception for divorce is adultery. Then later on we learn too a little more. If the spouse passes away, then you're free from that bond. We're going to learn more about that as we proceed in the book of Matthew, yeah.
So um, unto the children now, they were brought unto them little children that he should put his hands on them and pray, and the disciples rebuked them. So there were some people that uh, brought some kids there that needed praying over, to, you know, to uh, for them to uh, pray healing or whatever the case. But the disciples rebuked them. Like, no, no, uh, he's busy right now. Leave him alone. You know what I mean? Basically, that's what he's saying, you know, um, because Jesus is doing all this stuff. He had answering questions and... Um, with the Pharisees and uh, some people came with their kids, say, "But could they, could Jesus put his hands on them to help them?" You know, and the, uh, the disciples are saying, "No, no, no, no." The apostles said, "No, he's busy right now." But this is what happened. Jesus said, "He stopped what he was doing because he was talking to the Pharisees at this point, right?" He stopped what he was doing and he uh, looked over at his apostles, who yelled at him, literally, "Suffer little children and forbid them not to come unto me." For all, all, uh, for all of such is the kingdom of heaven. So, again, uh, it, the situation went right. Uh, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees, right? Big conversation, uh, answering questions, right? And again, somebody brought children to see Jesus. And the apostles told them, no, hold on, uh, he's busy right now, come back later, whatever they told him, right? Jesus stopped what he was doing, looked at his apostles and says, hold on, hold on one second. No, let them in here. Don't forbid them to come to me. So again, he said, but Jesus said, suffer little children and forbid them not. That means, what are you doing? Don't, don't stop them from coming to me. Let them come to me. And for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed thence. And behold, one came unto him Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So one of them came out and asked him about eternal life. How could I have eternal life? So, and he said unto him, Why call me good? There is none good but one that is God. But if thy will enter into life, keep the commandments. And <laughs> this is this is like a, this is where I really start to, my blood uh, starts boiling in a good in a good way, and then not against this. What he say? No. No, 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 no. Against what these churches are teaching today. And this really gets my goat. Okay, plain and simple. So now, how many times have you heard in these modern day churches that the Ten Commandments are no longer valid? It's only glory by grace we're saved, which is true, but grace is not a free pass to, to sin. And what is sin? Sin is defined in the scripture as transgression of what? The law, the commandments, right? So these modern day churches, especially dispensational churches out there, go around teaching wrongfully that the commandments are no longer valid. You don't have to worry about them. They're just for the Jews. Wrong. Okay? Gonna, when we do this series, guys, you got to see, I can't even tell you, dozens of times when Jesus tells us to keep the commandments of God. And yes, he's got his two great commandments, but he specifies the commandments of God. Bottom line, the Ten Commandments. And he re actually recites them. We're going to go, we're going to see this as we go along. And verse 17, he said unto them, why call me good? There is no one that's good but God. But if you want to enter the kingdom into eternal life, keep the commandments. And he said unto him, which Jesus said, that I shall not murder. So here's the thing. This is this is the dispensations out there, right? If the commandments are no longer law, they're no longer valid, they're just for the Jews. Why is Jesus telling them? Now here he is reciting specifically what they are. And he said to them, which Jesus said, you shall not murder. That's the sixth commandment. You shall not commit adultery. That's number seven. You shall not steal. That's number eight. You shall not bear war false witness. That's number nine. And through the scripture, he recites every one of them. And number five right here, honor your father and mother. And thou shalt love the neighbor as thyself. Which is his commandment. So you're seeing proof right here that the commandments, he says, keep the commandments, right? And not just the two commandments that the churches tell you, the two great commandments. It's all the commandments, guys. He just recited half the Ten Commandments, and it doesn't mean the other half are abolished, because in further scripture, he talks about those as well. Love the neighbor as thyself. That's Jesus' commandment. So you see in the mixture of both sets of commandments in one. And again, somebody asked him, how could I have eternal life, Master? 
And he goes to keep the commandments. Plain and simple. And a young man said unto him, All these things I have kept from my mouth up what I lack I yet. What, you know, I, I've kept all these things, he's saying. What do I lack? Jesus said unto him, If you, if thou be, will be perfect, go and sell, because he has the thing, this guy is rich, right? And he goes, I kept the commandments, I did this, this, what am I lacking? And Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, right, go and sell that those have. Go and sell what you have. And give it to the poor. And they shall have treasures in heaven and come and follow me. So he's saying, like, because guy, this guy's got some money. He's got, you know, goods and, you know, all that stuff, right? He said, go sell everything. If you really want to follow me, go sell everything. Give it to the poor. And instead of having these treasures on earth, have them in heaven. Because you sell the stuff, give it to the poor, you could have treasures in heaven, you sell them. Which is more better than anything we could have on this earth. And come and follow me. But when a young man heard that saying, he went in a sorrowful way. He went in a way sorrowful, for he had great possessions. So here he is, he's like upset. Oh man, I don't want to sell everything, I worked so hard for it. Or whatever, you know what I mean? So he was very sorrowful that he... Jesus told him that. But then he said to Jesus, uh, to his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of God. Now, does this actually mean that anybody that's rich is not going to heaven? No, that's not what it's saying. Not at all. But unfortunately, most rich people, uh, they don't know, you know, we could go on forever with that, you know what I mean? So again, he said, Verily I say unto you, that rich man, because you've just seen a lesson here. Yeah, this guy is rich, he had many possessions, right? Didn't want to sell them, didn't want to do them, because I guess his worthy possessions to him were more important than the treasures in heaven. And the Bible talks about how those treasures are going to rust away, and turn into dust, right? To rust, or thieves are going to break in and steal. Thieves can't break in and steal your uh, heavenly treasures. Rust and moths don't uh, tarnish your uh, heavenly treasures. But this guy, I guess, refused to do that. He just went away, like, oh, man, I'm not going to do that. Because he had great possessions. So then Jesus looked to his disciples and said, Verily I say unto you that the rich man shall hardly ever enter into the kingdom of God. And again I say unto you, that it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man in, to enter into the kingdom of God. So you all know what eye of a needle is. It's a little needle you use to sew. Okay, you can barely get the thread through let alone a camel that weighs like 2,000 pounds or something like that. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, so he says it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to get into heaven. But he had checked this out, right? People said that's impossible. How could a camel go through the eye? But anything's possible with God, plain and simple. And it talks about that, and it's literary, too. So if it's possible, yeah, you might think, yeah, you could even stick your finger through the eye of a needle. How could I even put a camel through it? With God, you can stick your whole body to it. Nothing's impossible. But check this out, right? When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, who can be saved then? Who then can be saved? If a camel you know, can go through an iron needle, then who could be saved? And Jesus told them and said unto them, with men this is impossible. What I was just talking about. Yeah. With men this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Okay, right now, none of us can even comprehend of sticking a finger, a pinky finger, through the eye of a needle. You'd be like, oh, it's impossible. Yeah, with men, it's impossible. And this is literally, guys, it's not figuratively, all right? Not that saying you're going to go through the eye of a needle literally to, you know what I mean? It's just saying, okay, making a point that with God, you can accomplish anything, you know what I mean? So Jesus said to them, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. So, yeah, he's saying, yes, it's possible for a rich man to go to heaven. It's possible. You know what I mean? He's saying that. The, you know, with God, and there's been, like, rich men that are good people, you know what I mean, that helped out the poor and everything else, you know. They're not going to be denied to the kingdom of God, you know, if they're believers too and everything. So then uh, answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have thereof? Well, and Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me, 
in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory, yet also shall sit upon the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So Peter's basically asking, well, what are we going to have? <laughs> we have forsaken all, we have given up everything, and followed you. What shall we have there for? So Peter is like just concerned. Because like, we, they remember they had fishing boats and all that stuff. They, um, which they still had their boats, but they gave up their everything in their life, you know what I mean? To follow him. And he goes, we have forsaken all. We have given it all up for you. And we followed you. So what are we going to have? And Jesus told them, I say unto you that you shall have followed me because you follow me. But in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne, the regeneration is talking about Later, he'll okay, in, in the spirit, you know what I mean? When you pass away in your flesh and all that, you regeneration into the spirit. And when the Son of Man shall sit at the throne of his glory, this is um, coming up the resurrection, you also will sit upon the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So he's telling them in the, the, the resurrection and the judgment, they're going to help him judge the unrighteous. And everyone that has forsaken houses, brethren, sisters, fathers, mother, wife, children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold and inherit a everlasting life. So I could say, I could say this, guys. For the ministry that I do and everything else, and for, it's all in the name of Jesus, you know, just exposing all the truth and all the evil in the world, right? I have lost a wife over this. I've lost many, many family members over this. I've lost many friends over this. I was homeless for a while. All for his name's sake. And then, you know what? When I was sitting, you know, sleeping in the car in the cold and everything else, I'm like, you know what? If this is for God, then, you know what I mean? It sucked, it did. But, you know, if this is for God, then it's meant to be. You know what I mean? Because I'd rather do that than, have, um, you know what I mean? To not honor my father. You know what I mean? In heaven. And my Savior in heaven. So, but many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. And to me, that I mean, uh, what means like a lot of people who come to the cross and all that, and you know, if you that already passed on and all that, shall be first. But again, she'll be last. Depend, I mean, like, I don't know too much what this really means here. But if you guys have a better understanding of this, please put it in uh, the comment section. Because, again, I'm learning as I go as well. But we'll just try to break down all the scripture here. But this is a valuable lesson. You know what I mean? It really is. In other words, if you're rich, okay, again, it doesn't mean you're, gonna, you know, you're not going to have a kingdom of God. But unless you, well, unless you, you know, give up your earthly churches, help people, that's what he's saying. It doesn't mean you're going to go sell everything, literally. You know what I mean? Unless, I mean, if it stops you from being a good person, yes, it's literal, you know what I mean? But just help people, you know what I mean? Plain and simple, don't let the money, because the Bible talks about here in the book of Matthew about the love of money is the root of all evil, and we're going to get into that. But um, these lessons we covered so far is explained more in detail as we go on. Especially with the children and um, the husband and wife here. So these are just like little lessons, okay, about the husband and wife, about children, and about, um, you know, the commandments. I mean, this is so much context in this one chapter. This is why I told you, you know, when we do these studies, that, you know, if we actually sat there, if you read, you know, if you're a decent reader, right, 30 verses here, how long would that take you to read? Yeah, you know what I mean? Depends on the person, you know, the level of reading. About two couple minutes, right? But again, you need to read these, take your time and understand what, like really we were, looked up with the word uh, eunuch meant. I didn't know what it was until I read it, you know what I mean? And I looked it up to myself, yeah. But yeah, you need to really understand this. And actually, I should really try to understand this too. But many that are first shall be last and the last shall be first. So in the context of be. That every one of us has forsaken our houses, brethren, and father and mother and wife, children, lands, and for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that are fresh shall be last and last and first. So we learned some good, valuable lessons today in this, in this uh, scripture here. 
So thank you guys for joining us. And um, again, uh, reading the scripture in this context is very important, guys. Context is key. It really is. And so trust the plan. The only plan you should be trusting is the Bible, guys. Plain and simple. And don't take my word or anybody else's word for it. I want you to read this for yourselves. Take your time. This is not a textbook, okay? This is not a magazine or a novel. Take your time. Every verse needs to be a comprehensive view of it. Break the verse down. Try to find out what it means, okay? And the scripture reveals itself and interprets itself. Plain and simple. And always pray for the Holy Spirit to help you. So, guys, if you like the show, we got a PayPal, Venmo, and Cash app. If you want to donate toward our ministries, the links are in the description. And best of all you can do is just pray for us, plain and simple. And please subscribe to nystv.org. Uh, awesome spiritual warfare stuff. You get 30 days free with a promo code Dan the Man. And it's nystv.org. Dan the Man, slow case one word. And you got a free subscription for 30 days. No obligation. So uh, check me out on truthradioshow.com is my website. And up on the YouTube channels and all that. It's all listed on truthradioshow.com. And I'll listen to all our shows. So that being said, guys, we thank you so much. God bless. Shalom. And you are the resistance.